You know a lot about golf. Well, we're waiting. Those weekend golf guys would like to be the first to wish you a happy new year, but we've missed that mark, I am sure. But happy new year anyway. You know what we're going to do today is we're going to look back on some of the stuff from 2015. John Chaffee, he's a songwriter, he's a singer, he's he's a golfer. It's just golf. Can can you give us permission? We don't have to pay any royalties or anything if we play like a minute of the song, do we? Absolutely not. It used to be a farm. It used to have a horse, but now it's something else, my favorite golf course. Right there by that creek, we used to throw a line, but now it's called a hazard. I'm in from time to time. I hit a ball, I watch it fly, not where I ain't. I don't know why, cause I was doing great out on the range. Now my clubs are racking all strength. It's gone, it's a day out in the sun, or the rain, or wind, or cold. It's gone, another game, another course, another funny story told. It's gone, the road comes. Well, you can do that. Just go to iTunes. You can, you can download it. Put it on my eye thing? Put it on your eye thing. iTunes? Yeah. John, why did you write this thing, man? Well, somebody said to me, John... You write songs, you play golf, why don't you write a song about golf? That makes perfect sense. So I thought, okay, um, there's a place that I've played now and then, a really nice family-owned place in Walhalla, South Carolina. It's called Falcon's Lair. It looks like, when you walk on there, it looks like it used to be a farm. It's got the rolling hills and the creeks running through it and everything. I thought, well, it used to be a farm. Now it's a golf course. I need a word to rhyme with course. Whole horse. Okay? <laughs> it, it used to be a farm. It used to have a horse. I just started writing, and then I started thinking about this game of golf, which is so frustrating because it is so inconsistent. Yesterday, I go out and I birdie the number one handicap hole and proceed to triple bogey the next one. That's the Mm -hmm. game. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I try to think of all the things that uh, can frustrate you on the course and that the fun that it is. And uh, what it all boils down to, really, is it's uh, it's a few hours you get to spend with your friends. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun, and that's I mean that's all embodied in the song. One other thing I want to point out: one one gentleman once told me when I was really young, and uh, young in the game, and I was having a very frustrating day, and I just kind of threw my club back in the bag and, and mumbled to myself, "Man, I love this game." Being a tad sarcastic, and this this older gentleman that I was playing with looked and he said, "Son, you have to keep in mind." The same people invented golf and called it a game that invented bagpipes and called it music. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That just encapsulates yeah, the whole thing it. right there. <laughs> so now you, you've written songs about other things. You've got a Christmas song that's still being played in the playlists of, of uh, you know, adult contemporary radio stations. You know those guys that start playing Christmas music around Halloween and, yes. and go from there that was uh, recorded in, um, let me say, Ann Cochran, right? Ann, Ann Cochran. I met Ann Cochran a couple of years ago, and she sang that song. She was touring with Jim Brickman. Yes, she does. It. She does a holiday tour yeah. with him every year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and heard that song. And, of course, the proceeds to that one, uh, the uh, proceeds I'll go to the Ovarian Cancer National Alliance. But uh, Nice. Yeah, Anne was very nice. And Jim Brickman, yes. of course, he's he's a piece of work, very talented. And it's it's, it's got to be cool to have those people performing one of your songs, man. I mean, that's just yes. cool. They were high school pals in, uh, in Cleveland, and they... Yeah. Uh, he he started out trying to get his songs played by writing jingles for radio stations, and she would sing, and that just yeah. kept went on and on. And uh, she did a great job on the song. I, I had a demo cut of it, and just changed the key. I'd love to do it. So now this song, it's golf. It, it's available through iTunes and Amazon, and, and your typical let's go here and download some music stuff. But uh, any anybody, some you got to find someone to adopt it as an anthem, man. That would be wonderful. You know, this is funny because I sent this song to about sixty golf pros. I sent it to the PGA, the LPGA, the golf magazines. I sent it everywhere. And I wrote a little note, you know, who I was and what I was trying to do, just have a little fun with it mm-hmm. for the regular everyday golfer. Not a single word. And then I sent it. I thought, oh, well, what the heck? I'll send it to Faraday. And a month later, and the man answered me. And he told me he loved the song. He said, if you could see all the crap that comes across my desk every morning, 
this was a refreshing change, and I'm giving it to my producer. I thought, man, what a nice guy. He hasn't got a second in the world. And so I don't know, nothing has happened with that yet, but he was nice enough to answer. And then along come you guys, and you're nice enough to answer. And that, that really makes me feel good. So because Faraday's producer is busy, we get to debut it nationally. Ah, How about that? Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, All right, so, another so. feather in those weekend golf guys' cap. <laughs> so really, we have the same sense of humor as David Faraday? Is that what's going on here? Yeah, well, I think it ours, sounds like it. I think ours is better. <laughs> Our sense of humor is better. His stories are weirder, though. They are, and he <laughs> delivers them with an accent that we can't quite mimic. But you know what the hell? Yeah, well, he's American now. He's officially an American. He just he's an American that talks funny. That's all. So uh, how how often do you get out to play now, John? Um, golf, not music. A couple times a week, maybe not go. every week. Yeah. Dad, you ever use golf to uh, increase your connections in the music biz? I sent it to a friend of mine in Nashville. And he said, John, that's a good song. But if it isn't about drinking, trucks, dirt roads, or hot chicks, you're not getting it on country, you're not getting it on country radio. That's right. That's, that's right. I was drunk the night my mother got out of prison. Yeah, I remember, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. a, that's, a, that's, a, that's the greatest opening line of any song. David Allen Cole. Yeah. That's it. You know, call me darling, darling, Mr. Mr. John Chaffee. Yes. We appreciate it, man. We're going to have to get you back on again. It's been fun. Old radio guys, man. I mean, we can go on forever. Yeah. You ever you ever want to have yeah. a great night out? What you do is you invite a couple old radio guys out for a couple of drinks. And I tell All you, right. you will be entertained forever. Just keep keep the beer flowing and you'll you'll be laughing. John and I'd be more than happy to come and entertain you anytime you want to buy. <laughs> next, that's right, that's next what I'm time, saying. Next time I'll sing Just your song right, to you, John. Put the picture on the table. <laughs> All, right. All right, John Chavy, it's golf. We've got more coming up from David Ledbetter, Jillian Murray, T.P. Mulrooney as we uh, continue to revisit some of the best of 2015 with those weekend golf guys. Don't you move. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Then get on board with the tax admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. They can freeze your bank accounts, seize your car, home, will garnish your paychecks and benefits. Don't take on the IRS alone. I can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the IRS. I'll cut your penalties, slash your interest, and reduce your overall tax bill sometimes. I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company with over 30 years experience helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. And we have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe ten thousand dollars or more to the irs are facing an audit a lien or levy then call me right away call 800-329-2708 again that's 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 if you're diabetic this message could change your life is your blood sugar out of control even when you do all the right stuff are you afraid of diabetic blindness and the risk of amputation as well as all those other side effects well you should be is there anything that could help manage your blood sugar nobetes is a natural supplement that may quickly and dramatically lower your blood sugar my name is bob quarter i've been using nobetes for about three and a half to four months now and in the first three months i've actually lowered my blood sugars from 500 down to 139 and then it dropped to 88 to 93 my name is kirsten i'm a type 1 diabetic and while taking nobetes my blood sugar levels dropped from 295 to 115 in just one day the fda hasn't evaluated these statements and nobetes isn't intended to diagnose treat cure or prevent any disease but for many it's helped drop their blood sugar so if you've been evaluated with high blood sugar don't delay evaluate nobetes now call 800-553-0803 and get your free bottle just cover shipping and handling call 800-553-0803 that's 800-553-0803 Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 
$3 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-554-4183 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 800-554-4183 to take your call now. Call 800-554-4183. That's 800-554-4183. Again, 800-554-4183. A brand new golf movie came out last spring called The Squeeze. And I've seen it, and it's a great golf movie. And we have Jillian Murray with us right now on the line, who is the female lead. How are you? I'm wonderful. So you got to see the movie? Yes. Yes, I did. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, they sent me one of those preview copies and, you know, made me promise I wouldn't show it to anybody else. And Yeah, the screeners. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Except he showed it to us. <laughs> but first off, I want to say, you know, welcome to um, to our cult. Golfers are very cultish and you have a golf movie and you're in a golf movie and you're, like, going to be remembered for that among golfers forever. No matter what oh, you do well, from great. this. Oh, that's great. Yes. I, I like the golf community, so that's it, perfect. I love the way they, they put you put you here. You are you play Natalie, the longtime mm-hmm. girlfriend, sassy, smart, and take no prisoners. That's a great description of her. I'm going to steal that. Yes. Yeah, that's so, it's so accurate, yeah. Yeah, but uh, basic crux without giving away an ending or anything, the, the plot line is here that your boyfriend, Augie, who's the, the lead character, very, very good golfer, wants to play in the U.S. Open, wants to hit the PGA Tour, but is way laid by a professional gambler who promises us a lot of money and that kind of ticks you off. Yeah, she comes from a, a really good upbringing uh, and stands by everything and money isn't really the most important thing in her life. And But uh, Augie's character, played by Jeremy Sumter, I mean, he's like a brilliant golfer. He is. He so. plays to a plus one. And that's that's one of the great stories about this movie. Uh, the producer wouldn't hire anybody that they had to hire a stand-in for to do the golf part. A double, right, right. So they made sure that five that he was auditioning and he took them out to Bel Air Country Club to play golf with them. And, um, oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know that story because I came on obviously after because he was the most important character to be, you know, right. to have a perfect golfer and an actor that really suited the role. But yeah, he really is a brilliant golfer. Yeah, he has a plus one handicap. If I could only play as good as he can. <laughs> you know, you know, Jillian, one of the things it, I, I've discovered when I was watching the movie is this movie doesn't have any huge name actors in it, but it has all of you who have huge faces. <laughs> Every time you see one of you, you go, oh, oh, she's from... There's there's a, there's a line in, in the acting world where uh, you, you get to a place where it's you're recognizable, but they always say to you, what do I know you from? Yeah. <laughs> and then, then you get past that cross where they go, oh, you're from blah, blah, blah. Right. And, you know, it's kind of good at the place you're at because you can't get stuck in that typecast world because if you're from Twilight... You're always the girl from Twilight. Right. You know? See, see <laughs> Jillian, that happens to John and me on a microcosmic scale. You know, we, we meet someone, they say, where do I know you from? And we kind of smile and they say, I know you checked me out at Kroger. <laughs> 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 or they hear my voice and they go, That's didn't it. you used to be John Ashton? Oh, that kills yeah. me. <laughs> or I listened to you when I was a kid. Yeah. I really love that one. That's fun. But, I mean, you, you've got, like, Michael Nori in the movie. Oh, I love him. Oh, he's, he's one of the most remarkable human beings. He's, like, magical. He really is special. Is it intimidating? For, for no, because he's so, he's so cool. Like, this, the first day we hung out, uh, he grabbed my number and we started texting back and forth about, like, just joke pictures. And he's a really cool, young at heart. Just yeah. a good guy. And for people who are, are saying, okay, I know that name. Who is that? If, if you're a TV fan, it was Ziva's dad in NCIS. If you're an old movie fan, he was in Flashdance. With Jennifer Beals. That's yeah, right. so there you go. Flashdance is a claim to fame, though, right? He, he's, he's known for his taste in beautiful, dark-haired women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is probably why he got your number the first day you were there. Exactly. Oh, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but then uh, another one of your co-stars, though, this is his second golf movie. So this guy, Christopher McDonald, Christopher, is, yeah, yes. he is going to be typecast because he was Shooter McGavin in Happy Gilmore. But he has a lot of Shooter McGavin like um, isms that he he brings to it. Still. Oh, he does. Like, so it feels like he's still the same character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, that that is the the vibe I got from him watching. They go, oh, it took a while to dawn on me exactly why I knew him. Oh, really? Yeah, I went, oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, because I've been in radio and rock and roll for a long time, so, you know, there's many brain cells missing, Jillian, so it takes me, <laughs> takes me a while to process stuff. All right, so... It's nice to have a fun office. I would love to be there more often. We, we have a lot of fun. If, you know, and that's the thing about golf, too. Now, did you get hooked? 
just being around it, did you get hooked at all or um, say, I got to go did, learn how to play this game or something? Well, I did have to play. I had to learn for three months at Bel Air Country Club. You know, it's, the thing that's addictive about it is not necessarily the, the sport but the atmosphere that comes with it. Getting to go into nature and being like, we don't have a lot of grass in L.A., it's a lot of traffic. <laughs> yeah. So when I have an opportunity to be somewhere with trees and stuff, I really take it. So I can understand the appeal because you get to get out and, and, and relax and really... So, and the social aspect of it, I think, is really, really special. But I'm not as great of a golfer as I'd like to be. I yeah. mean, also, I've only learned, you know, for this movie. Uh, there's a secret, Jillian. No one is. Hmm. No, yeah. I've seen them. No, I've worked with them. <laughs> yeah. The guys in the movie are freaking great. Oh, yeah, but they want to be better. So they no want to is... be better, but they're so good. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, come on. <laughs> I don't like how the women have to start at different places. I'm like, I already have, I'm already like trying to lose. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jillian, have you... I'm have destined you... to not be as good. Yeah. Have you run across any old movie stars at Bel Air Country Club? Um, guess who I played golf with the first time I played golf on that course? John Williams. I would have been singing well, all of his music all over the place. And it would have been the last well, time I'm you were invited to play golf with him. <laughs> Terry was with me, and he goes, do you know who that is? And I looked, and I, you don't recognize him by his face, because obviously he's in the music world, and right. it's not really. Uh, he goes, that's John Williams. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. And then as we're walking through the actual country club, and he would point out people, and I was like, my goodness, could not believe how many people went there. Yeah, he has one of those, like, Santa Claus looks. <laughs> yes, he does. He does look like Santa Claus. <laughs> well, listen, Jillian, if, if you want to actually get to the point where you can surprise all of your uh, compatriots in the Hollywood business, Jeff Smith will hook you up, teach you all you need to know about golf. Bandy, <laughs> I'll be happy to take care of that. And you can visit our Happy Fun office. You can. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> you, you can. We'll make you an uh, honorary golf guy and we'll have you come out and, and work with us. I can look like I'm a professional golfer. That's sure, right. We'll sure have our can. people call your people and we'll make the arrangements. But you okay. know what? When they lay eyes on you, they're not going to care if you're a professional golfer. <laughs> no, no. Oh, you're sweet. <laughs> no one will know where that ball went. Not at all. <laughs> That's the other thing I like about golf is you get to wear a really cute outfit. That's usually the first thing most women say about golf is, oh, I have to go shopping. Yes, let's play. So, yes. That's it. <laughs> Jillian Murray, the uh, female lead in The Squeeze. Great movie, and you've done good, kid. Maybe you Thanks, should think guys. you should think about doing this for a living, Jillian. Okay? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> right. Talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye. We still have comedian T.P. Mulrooney coming up. Stick with us, those weekend golf guys. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Then get on board with the tax admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. They can freeze your bank accounts, seize your car, home, will garnish your paychecks and benefits. Don't pick on the IRS alone. I can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the IRS. I'll cut your penalties, slash your interest, and reduce your overall tax bill sometimes. I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company with over 30 years experience helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. And we have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe ten thousand dollars or more to the irs are facing an audit a lien or levy then call me right away call 800-329-2708 again that's 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 if you're diabetic this message could change your life is your blood sugar out of control even when you do all the right stuff are you afraid of diabetic blindness and the risk of amputation as well as all those other side effects well you should be is there anything that could help manage your blood sugar nobetes is a natural supplement that may quickly and dramatically lower your blood sugar my name is bob quarter i've been using nobetes for about three and a half to four months now and in the first three months i've actually lowered my blood sugars from 500s down to 139 and then it dropped to 88 to 93 my name is kirsten i'm a type 1 diabetic and while Taking obedience, my blood sugar levels dropped from 295 to 115 in just one day. The FDA hasn't evaluated these statements, and Nobetes isn't intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. But for many, it's helped drop their blood sugar. So if you've been evaluated with high blood sugar, don't delay. Evaluate Nobetes now. Call 800-553-0803 and get your free bottle. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-553-0803. That's 800-553-0803. 
Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-554-4183 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 800-554-4183 to take your call now. Call 800-554-4183. That's 800-554-4183. Again, 800-554-4183. Hi, this is Morgan Freeman. Has anyone ever said, you are the picture of health? You look healthy, you feel fine, but that may not be the full picture. Colorectal cancer is the second leading cancer killer of men and women over 50. Since it doesn't always cause symptoms, you may not know you have it. The only way to know is by getting screened. Screening can find precancerous polyps, so they can be removed before they turn into cancer. This is one cancer you can prevent. Plus, screening can find colorectal cancer at an early stage when the chance for a full recovery is very high. Talk with your doctor and get tested for colorectal cancer. Medicare and many insurance plans help pay for screening. Get screened. Make sure you are the picture of health. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And welcome back. We are those Weekend Golf Guys. John Ashton here, Jeff Smith up at the Plain and Simple Golf School in Columbus. You think golf teachers, of course you think Jeff Smith, but right under him has got to be David Ledbetter. He had a new book in 2015 called The A-Swing. Here he is, our conversation with David Ledbetter. We are very pleased to have David Ledbetter with us here. And how you doing, man? I'm very well, and thank you very much for having me on the show, guys. Yeah, hey, you're quite Appreciate welcome. It. And you can tell by his accent that he lives in South Florida. So. <laughs> very South, yeah, very <laughs> South. People ask me where I'm from. I'm, I'm very, very east of Florida. <laughs> very east. <laughs> now, I, I want to ask one thing right off the bat, okay? Ernie Ells is a former student of yours. Mm-hmm. Now, is that easy swing of his, is that pure talent, or is that something you can teach me? <laughs> uh, I think that's God given. Okay. Honest, you? You know, uh, All right. Well, Ernie, cross that off the list then. All yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, just, I started coaching Ernie when he was 19, and, uh, you know, he already had that. Technically, we changed some things, but he, he always had that beautiful rhythm. And he had that actually. I remember seeing pictures of him uh, or film of him when he was actually serving in tennis. So it was just part of his makeup, really. Mm. You know, that, that fluidity, sort of like a. Roger Federer, I suppose, if he played golf, you'd probably have the same look, you know? That's so frustrating. I mean, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can't buy that stuff. Can't you know? buy it. No. I've been no, saving up, man. Now what am I going to do? Here's a guy whose his shoulders are so broad that when he wears a horizontal striped shirt and he makes that massive shoulder turn that he makes, it looks like an airplane taking off. Yeah, it's unbelievable. He's got a, an unbelievable but sort you, of uh, ban, if you will, if you want to call it that. I mean, it's just, you know, it's amazing how he how he's able to wind up. And uh, and I think you see that in a lot of great ball strikers through the years. You know, Greg Norman comes to mind, obviously, you know, with very wide shoulders. Faldo, the same thing. Nick Price, the same. And, yeah, it, it certainly helps. You know, that just gets the old upper body coiling and winding. And, uh, I mean, Ernie does it. I mean, he's, that's the epitome of his golf swing is that beautiful coil and wind up on his yeah. back swing. And one, one more thing we'd like to do before before we get really into it, is on behalf of the male population of the world, I'm not sure if you're responsible for developing Michelle Wee's putting stance, but we do thank you, whether oh, you're right. dead thank or not. You. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, better, we better not talk too much about that subject, but yeah, yeah absolutely. But I have to tell you that that is not something that I suggested to her, because uh, uh, I mean, if anybody likes to try that, you better make sure you have your chiropractor's number, Andy. Oh, definitely. Sure. How how difficult is it to uh, to get a guy like Nick Faldo or Nick Price or any of the guys who've gone on to be you know superstars in the golf business and and change what they're doing? Well, I mean, every case is different, and it it, it's, it, it is amazing. I mean, look, you 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 get some players. I mean, with a with a Nick Faldo, we change a lot. Uh, Nick Price, 
we didn't change that much. We, you know, it's subtle changes, shall we say, and it's all about understanding the swing and uh, each player understand their own swing, I should say. And it, it's, it's. I think as a teacher, you have to be very instinctive. I mean, you know, if you look at say Butch Harmon, I mean, you know, Butch is a great teacher, and but a lot of the players he teaches really haven't changed their swings that much. If you look at, I mean, Phil Mickelson, I mean, I, I defy anybody to say, hey, there's a lot of changes in his swings since he started working with Butch. But what he does do. You know, he works on the things that they know that work, and they keep working on it. So I think people sometimes get a, uh, an idea that teacher is going to change everything completely, and that's not the case. And, uh, in fact, the less you change, obviously, the better, because if you've grown up with something, you really pretty much want to stick at it, uh, if you can, if it's working, and just enhance it. And so I think that's, that's the key to, to teaching, is really being able to change as in, uh, depending on the individual that you're working with. And so I say some players, yeah, I mean, Lydia Coase, we've we have changed somewhat. Uh, Michelle Wee, no. Uh, I mean, just pretty much, you know, she's got some of the traits she had, or most of the traits she had when she was 15. So it's it's you know, it is a, a case of looking at each individual case. I think you are one of the premier golf instructors in in the world in history, maybe. I'm I'm a mere student, and, and ask Jeff, not a very good one to begin with. So what I'm going to do is defer, and I'm going to let Jeff and you talk about teacher stuff. All right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> David, I've been I've been a, a teacher for about 20 years, and I've learned an awful lot from your teaching. Uh, not just the DVDs that you've produced, but you have been uh, a world class teacher of teachers. There are many influences that you have and you have shared uh, your experience with an awful lot of people. So first, thank you very much for for all of that. You're 30 plus years as a teacher. Uh, you are somewhat of a, a pioneer in the use of video and, and doing it well. How do you think that when you started to develop using uh, some video, how do you think you changed as a teacher? Well, uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you very much for those kind words as well. Um, but I, I think that, look, if, if it wasn't me, it would have been somebody else. I mean, video was coming, and we can see what it's uh, led to now with all the, you know, with all the, obviously, technology we have around to, to assist us. And in the end, you know, they are tools after all, even you know, from TrackMan to force plates to you name it. Um, they are tools which actually help in getting the message across. So I think more than anything, golf is a difficult game from the standpoint of what we feel we do and what we actually do, uh, as we know, are two different things. And so I think video, I mean, was really enabled uh, us as teachers to be able to explain it in a much simpler fashion and and make comparisons and uh, to see improvement. And now, obviously, we can quantify it with, with numbers now with TrackMan. Uh, but I, I think it, it, it enabled not only for me to sort of – because I've always – I've been a very instinctive teacher, and I sort of get a – I'm very visual, and I, I, I get a picture in my mind of how I think a person should swing. And then it, it's a lot easier if you can actually show somebody uh, exactly where they are and maybe the, the coach or the teacher makes a swing and say, okay, and you match them up. It does help, obviously, visual people a lot more than, than anything else. I mean, I, I've had players actually who are not particularly visual. They're more kinesthetic. You know, have, they're more feel-oriented. And they actually don't like looking at video. Video sort of distracts them. So you, you have to, once again, even with video, you've got to use it uh, with I would say discretion, shall we say? And so, uh, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I was—I've been at tournaments through the years um, uh, where a player wanted to look at their swing on video, and I said, "Oh, gosh, darn! You know, battery's flat. You know, I didn't want them to, i didn't want them to see it because you, you know, I mean, I mean, the problem is, as golfers, we're all perfectionists. We all—we all think it's probably better than it actually is, and. Uh, and although you can get somebody to you know, hit the ball quite nicely, in fact, there may still be a little idiosyncrasy in there that they've been working on probably for maybe their whole golfing careers. And yet, uh, you know, players, as I say, it's, 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 a, it's a very fickle game, this instruction. As we all know, as you know, Jeff, I mean, teaching somebody, I mean, it's, it's like you, it's a lot of trial and error. It's, it's not all pure, you know, science. I mean, there's a lot of science, as we know. There's a, there's a lot of art and there's a, 
there's a lot of instinct in 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 teaching, and uh, sometimes you hit on it, and uh, sometimes you don't. And so I think that's why. I mean, today, I mean, unfortunately, everybody tries to pigeonhole everything today. It's not all. I mean, there's all the science around, but as I like to say, look, right. people, people in the old days say, "Hey, listen, what you do before video and all this?" I said, "Well, it was just my instinct, you know. I mean, you know, rather than just my uh, opinion that you know, the swings were bad and they weren't, <laughs> they weren't, they they needed improvement. Now we can actually prove it." You know, that's the difference. You know? right. so, <laughs> and so it's a case of how you get the message across. And video, obviously, is a, is a tremendously helpful tool. And it certainly was a, a big boon in teaching for, for, for everybody, really, for all teachers. David Ledbetter <laughs> is our guest here on Those Weekend Golf Guys. And, and you have a new book out called The A-Swing. And, and Jeff used to tell me that I have an A-Swing. The A stood for awful. I have an idea <laughs> that that's not what it stands for in, in, in your new book. But we are going to come right back if you'll hang with us through the break here. And we will discuss in detail The A-Swing and all of its ramifications. David Ledbetter's new book available now. And uh, you need to hang out with us right here on Those Weekend Golf Guys. Powered by Golf Talk America. Don't move. Those weekend golf guys looked back on 2050. Happy New Year again from those weekend golf guys. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-554-4183 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 800-554-4183 to take your call now. Call 800-554-4183. That's 800-554-4183. Again, 800-554-4183. I've owned my company for 14 years now, and I can tell you that payroll is a four-letter word. I hate doing it. It eats up hours I don't have, and it costs me money I could be saving. But my accountant's too expensive, and I'm not sure who to call. But I know I need help. We're Paychex, and we take all the hassles out of small business payroll. We save you time and money. It's easy. Call, fax, or give us your payroll information securely online and we take care of the rest. We calculate the correct taxes, manage payments and direct deposits. We even send out your checks. Payroll doesn't need to be a four-letter word anymore. We're so sure that we can save you time and money that we'll give you a month's payroll free. Just for calling 877-376-2829. Get one month's payroll for free. Call Paychex right now. 877-376-2829. That's 877-376-2829. Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Then get on board with the tax admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. They can freeze your bank accounts, seize your car, home, will garnish your paychecks and benefits. Don't take on the IRS alone. I can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the IRS. I'll cut your penalties, slash your interest, and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company with over 30 years' experience helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. And we have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe 10 thousand dollars or more to the irs are facing an audit a lien or levy then call me right away call 800-329-2708 again that's 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 and welcome back those weekend golf guys john ashton jeff smith and uh, hanging with us through the break hope you did because david ledbetter did too and he's got a brand new book called the A-Swing, and and one of the segments of the book I I read there, uh, David, was about a seven-minute practice session, and I said to myself, you know, I think I could probably handle that. (laughs) Because for for most of us in in my position, which is a purely recreational amateur golfer, the whole practice idea is, I don't want to say a waste of time, but it's time we don't have. We have to choose, are we going to practice golf or play golf? So seven minutes and doing it, you know, in my living room or my backyard or on the deck or whatever – that is something that 
that doesn't intimidate me and doesn't turn me off. So thank you for putting it out that way. But once again, I defer to our teacher in residence, Mr. Jeff Smith, who understands the whole teaching aspect of this thing. As we look into this, um, in the, in this alternative swing, it works for everybody. David, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you're not picking out a, a certain body type and that fits it. And really, that's all you're, you're saying, hey, look, this is going to work for an awful lot of folks here. Yeah, well, that's absolutely right. But let me say, you know, from the outset here, look, it, it's really, I've never liked to be termed a method teacher. This is really an approach. It's an organic approach. And even though players may think they're doing it exactly the same as the next person, if two people working on it, say, next to each other on the range, they're not going to look the same. I mean, uh, the, the key really, you know, A stands for alternative, and it, it's, it's the alternative backswing more than anything else. I think, you know, as teachers, physiologists, uh, trainers, we all know sort of pretty much how the swing works these days. I mean, from how energy transfers from lower body to upper body, the arms, the hands, the club. But I think one of the, the most difficult things, I think, for players of all levels, for that matter, uh, is the backswing. I mean, I just think people work so hard for so many years trying to get a backswing, trying to get the club in position in order to make some sort of decent downswing. And so the essence of the, of the A-swing really is to get a simpler backswing where we, whereby you can get in position to come down in a, in a more synchronized manner. Because the whole, the whole essence of the A-swing essentially is that how you sync, sync up your arms and your body. To me, that's the key for consistency. Everybody's looking for consistency. So if you simplify the backswing, and it's, it's what we call a minimalistic backswing. In other words, there's, there's less movement. The most efficient way really, but, you know, let's, let's, let's take Usain Bolt. Okay, He's in the news at the moment. Okay, Now, right. listen, if, he's, if he's zigzagged all over the track okay he wouldn't he wouldn't be you know he wouldn't be having the times that he does okay he'd be running 150 meters most people okay if, if you consider the backswing 100 meters long most people do travel about 150 meters to get there okay that's the best example i can give so this is a much simpler way of getting the club to the top uh, so it synchronizes the arms and the body and ultimately it allows the body to work better on the downswing and gets the club into the right position coming down the, you know the there's a baseball component this most many most people, especially in America, obviously, have played baseball or t-ball, certainly, growing up. And, you, you know, if you look, at, you look at a batter in baseball, okay, where's the bat or softball? The bat's sort of somewhere up in the sky. They're waiting for the pitch. Okay, so it's almost, say, say it's, say it's at 12 o'clock. As they move their lower body, the bat then flattens and shallows out onto the plane that the pitch is coming on. And that, is in, a, in essence, is really what we're saying with the A swing. I've always believed in having a more vertical backswing to have a shallower downswing. And so, yes, it does work with a lot of different body types. Some players can't get it as steep. And we, we, I, li I liken it to, being from England originally, I like Indian food, so, you know, which is a... a, a very popular over in the UK. And so, but when you order Indian food, okay, it's, there's, there's different degrees of heat or spiciness, shall we say. You get, the, you get the mild, you get the medium, you get the hot, you get the extremely hot. Now, if you follow the model exactly for this A swing, it would be the extremely hot version. But even if you have the mild version, if you can simplify this back swing, the suggested a slightly different grip from what from the traditional approach to uh, how the grip should be undertaken. And it, it essentially, it, there's no rotation of the club face going back. To me, so many amateurs, as they roll the club back, somehow they're going to roll the club back down again. So it eliminates that aspect of the swing. And so it's, we've, we've, we've really tried to sort of simplify things. And, you know, so many players have displayed traits of this A swing through the years. One of my favorite swingers of all time, probably the most accurate hitter in the history of the game, was Calvin Pete. Now, if you look at his golf swing, it looked a little strange, a little home, homemade, shall we say. I mean, he had a bent left arm because he broke his arm when he was a kid. But if you look at, the, if you look what the club does, it's sort of, the club head never gets behind his hands. It always stays in front of his hands. And as he changes direction, the club shallow down. And my goodness me, did he not get the club in a good position from halfway down through to after impact. I mean, he, you know, he, he really was no did. doubt the straightest hitter, I would say, in the history of the game. I mean, he led the driving statistics, fairways hit for 10 years in a row, averaging over 80% every year. I mean, it was just incredible. So, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. 
We've, uh, I mean, if you look at young Lydia Ko, she displays great traits of this A-swing. And if people are interested, I mean, it's a lot easier when you see it on video, and I say it's been out a couple of months, but the book has been really well received up to this point. I mean, we've had just amazing comments. You've just got to go on Amazon.com and have a, and check it out, some of the reviews. Uh, and people say, hey, this is natural. This has been a lifesaver. I mean, I do a radio show myself. Uh, Obviously not up to your, you guys' standards, but I do uh, on serious radio. I have one at 9 o'clock called Ledbetter's Locker Room. And well, um, so we get people radio. calling in about the A-swing, and I had this one fellow say, you saved my marriage because my wife started playing better, and, you know, she was going to quit the game, and I didn't want, you know. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> but, uh, you yeah, know, that was just a sidebar. But, I mean, no, it's, it's, uh, it's, it, it really uh, – and along, you know, we mentioned, you know, mentioned uh, John, the seven-minute practice plan. Well, the problem is that most people do not have a lot of time to practice. And, and listen, if you want to get better, you've got to do a little bit of work. And so we figured that there's a little six little swing exercises, and, and we provide even a short club if, you know, if, you, if you're worried about damaging your, you know, your fancy artwork or chandelier. There's a little short club you can practice with. You don't have to hit a ball. And there's six little swing exercises, which take about seven minutes to actually complete the whole program. And it just develops a sort of feel or a muscle memory, if you will, uh, whereby when you can go out, when you go out and play, and this is the ultimate, isn't it? When you go out and play, you're not really thinking about your technique, you're just thinking about hitting shots. Mm -hmm. And so this ace swing does help to produce a draw, and which is obviously the curse of 90% of the world's golfers, the fact that they're steep, over the top, swinging from the outside. And this does get the club shallowing, and that's, that's the key. It gets the club on the right plane coming down with the arms and body more in sync. So in a nutshell, that's it. <laughs> so. You know, I've I found that that out of all of the over the years, you've created an awful lot of really terrific and specific training aids. Some grip, some club, but yet this one, you've got something called the boomerang. That <laughs> is really nice. It, it sits it, underneath your right arm. Yeah, it's for a, on the it's way a, back, it, and it keeps your arm in. Yeah, I, you know, I got where I got the idea from. You know, obviously, a lot of times when we're trying to keep people connected, shall we say, with with it be the right arm or the left arm, uh, we put a head cover or something. And I actually I used a putter cover, and I was using an Odyssey putter cover, and it had a magnet in it, and uh, and it fell out, and I just put my club head on, picked it up. And I thought, oh, that's a good idea. So this is what we yeah. we actually made the boomerang. With, with that in mind, it's got a little magnet in it, so you put it under your arm, and when it does fall out, which it eventually probably will do as you as you follow through, right. you just don't have to bend over; you just put it back <laughs> under your arm. And lazy ways, you know, lazy way to practice. <laughs> That's right. You know, and and I would be the first one to tell you that that might be the first training aid that John would be willing to use <laughs> because That's of it. that magnet. No bending over. Sign it, me it, up. It really, it really helps when you fold that right arm with a beer in your hand, there, John. You just that's right. That right. It's right under your armpit. It works perfectly. He's, he's been watching. <laughs> he has been watching. <laughs> yeah, and if anybody's interested, look, you just go to leadbetteracewing.com and just check it out. I mean, the testimonials are there, and, uh, you know, we're, instruction people have different versions of how it should be done and different opinions and points of view and so on. I mean, we've seen a lot of great results. I've had a lot of teachers come to me and say, wow, this is really easy. I had a fellow come to me and said, you know, I tried it out. He said, I thought he it so well, and I tried it with a couple of my members. He said, and the word got around. He said, within... He said, my, my, my lesson book is full for the next three months. He said, I just want to thank you. <laughs> well, that's great. You know? so that's right. I just hope in some way that this, the A-swing can sort of weave its way into the fabric of golf instruction because it is a, a pretty easy way of swinging the club. And, you know, after all, I mean, look, as we all know, look, if we can, if we can get people playing good golf and hitting the ball solidly, having more fun, they're going to stay in the game. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's the easiest way to keep people playing, okay? Forget mm -hmm. about making holes bigger and all the rest right. of it, you know? I mean, right. just get people hitting the ball better, having more fun, and they'll, they'll come back and play. Exactly. <laughs> and there's, cool. there's usually that one great shot toward the end of a round that makes you come back the next time anyhow, no matter how badly you've played. So yeah, that's true. That's some, true. Something that that can be uh, easily understood and feel more natural and easy to practice 
I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. LedbetterAceWing.com. You want information, go to Amazon.com. It's David Ledbetter's The A Swing. Yeah, it's you in Barnes and Noble. Book. And, uh, so it's, it's, mm-hmm. and the book's done, you know, it's really well. It's, it's, it's got 200 illustrations in it. And, mm-hmm. it's, so it's, it's, and you, don't, so you can just take little pieces. As, as a great Harvey Pennick used to say, listen, you don't have to take the whole bottle. Just take one or two pills and you'll see a difference. <laughs> <laughs> and the good right. news is thanks to the generosity of Mr. Ledbetter, you can go to our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Golf Guys. And uh, sign up to uh, to win maybe a uh, an autographed copy of the A Swing from David Ledbetter. So not only have a great book, but a collector's item to boot. Mister Ledbetter, pleasure to meet you, sir. Um, well, thank you very much, guys. Ledbetter's locker on uh, Sirius XM Radio. You can catch him there, or maybe we'll have him back here if if uh, any Grace us with his presence yet again. We've got more coming up. P.P. Mulroney as we uh, continue to revisit some of the best of 2015 with those weekend golf guys, don't you know? Do you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Then get on board with the tax admiral and let us steer your way to financial freedom. The IRS is the largest collection agency in the world. They can freeze your bank accounts, seize your car, home, will garnish your paychecks and benefits. Don't take on the IRS alone. I can fight for you using industry secrets that can help stop the IRS. I'll cut your penalties, slash your interest, and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company with over 30 years experience helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. And we have a 95% customer satisfaction rating. If you owe ten thousand dollars or more to the irs are facing an audit a lien or levy then call me right away call 800-329-2708 again that's 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 800-329-2708 i've owned my company for 14 years now and i can tell you that payroll is a four-letter word i hate doing it it eats up hours i don't have and it costs me money i could be saving But my accountant's too expensive, and I'm not sure who to call. But I know I need help. We're Paychex, and we take all the hassles out of small business payroll. We save you time and money. It's easy. Call, fax, or give us your payroll information securely online, and we take care of the rest. We calculate the correct taxes, manage payments and direct deposits. We even send out your checks. Payroll doesn't need to be a four-letter word anymore. We're so sure that we can save you time and money that we'll give you a month's payroll free. Just for calling 877-376-2829. Get one month's payroll for free. Call Paychex right now. 877-376-2829. That's 877-376-2829. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 800-554-4183 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 800-554-4183 to take your call now. Call 800-554-4183. That's 800-554-4183. Again, 800-554-4183. And of course, you know our motto, always leave them laughing. That's what we're going to do. T.P. Mulrooney, golf comedian, as we look back on some of the best of 2015 with those weekend golf guys. And on the phone, live and direct from Chicago, Illinois, we have T.P. Mulrooney, golf comedian. Or or are you just a comedian who talks about golf? How do, how do you want to pigeonhole I'm, yourself, uh, T.P.? Oh, well, uh, I, I sort of fell into this golf comedy thing. I never expected to do that, but I'm glad I did because it's something I, something I really like, so. You like, <laughs> I was actually a comedian for about 20 years before I ever started doing golf. 
Well, you know what? It just sort of snuck into my show. And I remember I was playing a club in Cleveland, a big club there called Hilarities. And uh, the guy came up to me afterwards, and an audience member said, Hey, man, what do you like to golf? Come on. So what are you talking about? He said, he talked a lot about golf. And the club owner happened to be standing there at the time, and he said, I said, did I really talk that much about golf? And the club owner gave me one of those glares and said, yes. <laughs> he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy. And I, and I said, well, really? I said, I did. And he played back my tape, and I did, out of a 50-minute set, I did 12 minutes of golf. He said, that's too much. He says, you're only like one out of ten people as a golfer, so you either have to just knock out that golf stuff or go find golf audiences. Well, I didn't like his tone, so I. <laughs> so just to spite him, I went out and found golf audiences. And of course, I starved for about two and a half years, uh, but then I started finding golf audiences. So that's what I do now. You do special uh, charitable things. You're at golf tournaments. You perform for PGA audiences. I mean, you're like all over the place, man. Yeah, I do a lot of. Uh, I do I do a lot of country clubs too, just because that's where the golfers are, and you know they can they can assemble and they've got a room and a microphone, so <laughs> it's really easy. It's really easy. Isn't it great to be in this business, man? That's all I require. That's all you need: a room and a microphone and a couple warm bodies, maybe to sit out front and pretend to listen in. That's, your, that's optional, though. <laughs> you know, it, it, the great thing about me doing golf is that when I was uh, just doing regular comedy in comedy clubs, which I you know I did for like twenty years, it was the, the thing that all comics struggle for is to find some sort of connection to your audience. You know, if you're in Cleveland, you want to talk about something Cleveland. If you're in Atlanta, you want to talk about something Atlanta or is this something that everybody can attach themselves to. Well, see, that's the great thing about what I do. It, I know there's a lot of golfers out there, and the reason they come because I'm billed as the golf comic. Mm-hmm. So they know what they're getting into when they get there. So I have something in common with the crowd as soon as, I, as, soon as they get there. So it makes my job a lot easier. It's yeah. a lot more fun. One of, one of our uh, main pet peeves, also, is one of your best bits that that they sent is the the articles in the golf magazines not being written for us, but for really good golfers. <laughs> That's just it. I was so happy to see that you guys are are the, uh, the 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 radio voice for the average guy. Yeah, because all the stuff for the pro golfers they don't they don't apply to us. No, you know I hear them talking about. You know, they say, well, you know, this game is all, it's a 99% mental. No, no, no. It, it is after you've got the superior talent like those guys. Yeah. Then it becomes 99% mental. But but for us, it's just trying to hit the ball. <laughs> just, trying to, try, just trying to stay in front of that ball. That's hard enough for me. I always say, people say, oh, you, you want to go play Pebble Beach? No, I don't need to go play Pebble Beach. <laughs> you know, any, the, the local golf course is plenty challenging for me. A ball that's sitting there on the ground, perfect, you know, perfectly level, it's still hard enough for me. Yeah. I'm a 29 handicap. I don't, I don't need to challenge a Pebble Beach with all their swirling winds and their difficult, uh, difficult lives. So. It just yeah. likes to add that extra element of difficulty for you. Yeah, well, that way you have an excuse. Yeah. You have an excuse. You, you can quit counting and just say, hey, I'm here. I'm just going to enjoy the experience. Do you ever think some of those magazines yeah. put an ad out like, are you struggling with your 120-mile-an-hour club speed? Do you want to increase it and make you go 140? Well, this is the product you need. <laughs> well, the one, you, here's one you see all the time. You see how to increase your drive by 10 yards. They, they have to do that at least one every other month. Yeah. Well, guys, I, I've been getting those magazines for 20 years now. And if yeah. those articles worked, I have a drive of just under 2,700 yards. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. Exactly. I'm still circling somewhere around 185, 190. <laughs> Maybe you're just not reading them carefully enough, DP. I don't understand that. It, it, it could be. I just... Maybe I just need to back up a little. Yeah, it's the same thing with insurance. If I just change my insurance every month, I'd get it for nothing. Because every insurance, <laughs> auto insurance company is going to save me 20 bucks. You know, just keep changing and you'll get it down to absolutely where they start paying you, man. It's great. Boy, that right. There's that to be an infinite point, right? Yeah. If you keep exactly. saving 50% yeah. every time you get it, you, after a while, you have to be paying just about next to nothing. You're right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What a great idea that is. Get paid to have that. Uh, I like your math, John. That's good stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Now, now TP, do, do you play often or do you talk about it more than you play? Well, you know, unfortunately, guys, I, 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 these days I, I talk about it more than I play. Yeah. You know, when, when I was really struggling and I had all the time in the world, I got to play a lot. Yeah. But now, you know, I go to play great course. I go to Pinehurst, and I get to look at the course on the way in. I don't go do my show. And because I got another show the next night, I get to say goodbye to Pinehurst on the way out. <laughs> so I get tantalized yeah. by some of the greatest courses in the world, but I rarely get to play them. Two-night gig. 
so that way you get to hang out and play during the day and do a show the night before, play during the day, do another show, and then get out of town. And make play in that course. I want you to be my agent. Package, my I buddy. want you as my <laughs> agent. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah, TP, it does make my, sense. My agent seems to be getting me in Florida one night and in California another night. I want to get him on that. That's the most important thing for me. <laughs> That is the yeah, most important thing for my agent. I don't think he quite understands. However, yeah, improving your game substantially, I would think, would be detrimental to your act, man. There's nothing funny about a six oh, handicap. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, a lot of people can't believe it that when I tell them I'm a 29 handicap, but I really, I really am. And the thing about it too, like with golf pros, I love golf pros too. I love golf pros because they're much better than the magazines because they actually try to help you. Right. And your individual game. But all golf pros all look at the same thing and they say, you know, geez, you, you got a nice swing. So just, I think there's a lot of guys like me. I do have a nice swing. Mm -hmm. But just put that ball in front of it and something goes awry. <laughs> that is the hardest part about golf is that there's, white ball. As you guys know, there's a lot more to it than, than uh, just just having a nice swing. Like, I, I, you're going to have a golf psychologist on, right? Yes. Yeah, yep. we do. Gary Sales. Right yeah, in me. I can help you, bro. The, now, let me ask you this. Does... Does this ever? Does this happen to you? Now, this, this is the honest kind of truth. I'm not trying to be funny here. What the first? My first golf experience was when I was a kid. I saw Jack Nicklaus play, and I, I went into my father's bag and I stole his nine iron. And I went in our backyard and I started just hitting these plastic wiffle balls. Well, I hit the ground just like Jack Nicklaus did, and I took a divot. Well, my father came out, saw me doing this, and said, "What the hell are you doing to my yard?" And I was digging up the yard, and he just couldn't stand it. And to this day, I'm 57 years old, all I can think about is not being able to dig up that yard. So now, <laughs> I cannot take a divot. I cannot get my club into the ground. <laughs> if you could tee the ball, if you could tee the ball up on, on every shot, I do think I'd be about a 12 handicap. <laughs> but you can't do that. Childhood trauma rears its ugly head, man. I hate that. <laughs> it does. It does. You know how they all say it all goes back to your childhood? Well, it does, guys. I, I'm afraid it all goes back to your childhood. Okay, Gary, fix them, man. You know, another problem I had was I played football yeah. when I was in high school. You know, in football, they tell you, you know, try as hard as you can. Use all your muscles on every play. Yeah. Try, 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 try. Then you start playing golf. They say, TP, you need to relax. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy to relax. Especially when that ball is just looking at you. Oh, man. Re hey, reprogramming, man. That's, that's the key. Reprogramming. Change your yeah, thinking, bro. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's why... You know, I, my game got a lot better when I started buying recycled balls. <laughs> you know, <they're> nice. <laughs> when 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 I was hitting those expensive balls that were four dollars a piece out of bounds, that's when I they got really pressured. When I started playing Dunlop, I got a lot better. <laughs> It is that severe. Not, I, don't, you know, I think I would be the great voice for Dunlop balls. I, I don't think Dunlop has one, but I, I, I'd like to be the spokesman for Dunlop balls. Maybe the cheapest balls you have. Yeah. You know, try, let me let me try a couple of uh, slogans out on you guys. Dunlop balls for guys who just aren't good enough to play Titleist. <laughs> yeah, trade trade market quick. I T P Mulroney, and, and man, we're we're running out of time here. But before we leave, uh, you, as you mentioned, you're a 29 handicapper and. And you've got a great bit on equating the handicap system in golf. We're going to play that bit before uh, we get right. out of here for today. But we appreciate you being with us, and uh, good luck. And hopefully you'll show up someplace uh, close in the Midwest here. We can uh, we can all go out and, and catch your act live and in person. T.P. Mulrooney, appreciate it. Any Anytime. John, J.R., Jeff, it was a pleasure, guys. Thank you. You're quite welcome, right. man. Take it easy. We'll Take talk care. to you again. J.P. Mulrooney, golf comedian, and here is his bit on golf handicap system. Here's all it is. I'm a golf handicap is nothing but an illusionary device designed to give even the worst golfer the feeling of competitiveness. <laughs> For instance, if hunting were a handicap sport, the 29 handicap would be the guy shooting at a deer that's tied to a tree. <laughs> With the deer looking more bored than scared. Jeez, I'll go deaf before he shoots me. Hey, as you can see, it's about golf, but it's more about fun. You want to have some fun? You want to talk golf? Be back here every week right here at this same time. I'm John Ashton for Jeff Smith. All those, all those weekend golf guys. Have a happy new year. We'll talk to you next week right here.